Good day, Kavibab, and welcome to our Speakers Demo Reel webinar series. For the demo teaching today, the topic will be on Techniques for Teaching Children with Special Needs in an Inclusive Classroom. Good day, Kavibab, and welcome to our Speakers Demo Reel Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. We will be posting the Zoom link in the comment section before our demo teaching, and the first five participants to join the Zoom meeting will be allowed to have close interaction with the speaker during the session and have an open forum after the demo teaching. The first five participants will serve as the students for the speaker's demo reel and will get a copy of the speaker's presentation at the end of the webinar. For those who will be chosen, make sure your microphones are turned off until asked to turn on. Do you enjoy learning with Vival? Make your experience even more exciting by becoming a Vibal Group fan. Exclusive perks await fan subscribers. Get access to exclusive webinars. Enjoy free teaching resources. Check out exclusive content. Get discounts on Vibal products. All of these for only 55 pesos a month. Exciting, right? Subscribe as a fan now. Here's how. Visit Click Follow. First, visit Vibal Group's Facebook page. Then click Become a Supporter to purchase a monthly subscription. Lastly, follow the prompts that appear on your screen. But don't confuse this for top fan. Nah, -uh, it's a different thing. You need to follow the easy steps. Visit, click, follow. Be a Vibal Group fan and enjoy exciting perks today. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Good day again, Kavibal, and welcome to our Speakers Demo Reel webinar series. For the discussion today, the topic will be on Techniques for Teaching Children with Special Needs in an Inclusive Classroom. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions on the comment box allotted and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Rosa Ana Amante Canlas holds a master's degree in special education, major in autism and mental retardation, and is currently working her dissertation in University of Makati, Makati City. She is presently teaching grade 4 students at San Antonio Village Elementary School. She is the school's English reading coordinator, paper advisor, publication and newspaper, and a grade leader facilitator, and school resource speaker. She is one of the textbook writers of Edukasyon sa Pagpapakatao, K-12 Curriculum, Learning Material, and Teacher's Guide. Grade 3 and a Division Localized Learning Assessment Writer for English 5. Year 2015 to 2017, she taught students with autism in reading in Nemesho Yabut Elementary School, Makati City. She was also the Empire and Shapers Reading Remedial Coordinator and Teacher in 2015 to 2017. Science Reading Camp Teacher for Reading Program for Struggling Leaders, Non-Readers, and Learners with Learning Disability in 2013 to 2015. And Summer Schools National Echo Savers Program Coordinator for three years. She was a Women National Collegiate Athletic Association champion and became a trainer in table tennis elementary division district school level. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Miss Rosa Ana Amante Canlas. Okay, it's always a little easier when you have enough information for the child's condition and a proper diagnosis. But there is always some case. First, maybe several uh, special needs students in your classroom with different clinical appearances. So what are the you know, strategies for teaching special needs students you can implement in your classroom to make sure you have an inclusive environment? To to Vival and to Mam Chilean, to our principal, Mam Cecil and San Jose, to my colleagues and to all the viewers and to, um, to all who are right here now, um, good afternoon. Children and young people may experience learning experience some difficulties at some the same point or some point. This is not unusual for most children of the of the difficulties are temporary and are soon overcome with help and encouragement from home and school. So what is SEN? Special education needs or the term special educational needs is used to describe learning difficulties or disabilities that make it harder for children to learn that most children of the same age. Children with special educational needs are likely to need extra or different help from the given to other children their age. This is um, this help is known as special education non provision. The special education also or under the idea or individuals with disabilities educational act with a disability is entitled to a free appropriate public education or PAPI, what we call PAPI. The idea emphasizes educational um, special education and related services which should be designed to meet a child's unique needs and prepare for them, them for further education, employment, and also independent living. Then for the Department of the Department of Education year 1997, the basic um, the DepEd stressed that the ultimate goal 
of education, uh, special education is for the integration or mainstreaming of children with special needs into the regular school system and eventually in the community. That's why we have our legal basis of educational. First, I'd like um, to present first a legal basis of special education from the um, Batasang Pambansa Bilang to Trito. Then we have the state shall promote the right of every individual to a relevant quality education, regardless of sex, um, age, creed, socioeconomic status, physical and mental conditions, racial or ethnic origin, political or other affiliation. Um, the state shall therefore promote and maintain equality or access to education, as well as the enjoyment of the benefits of education by all its citizens. Then we also have the, the Republic Act 7277, our Magna Carta for disabled persons, that uh, this one, the act providing for the rehabilitation, self-development and self-reliance of disabled persons and their integration into the mainstream, mainstream of society and for other purposes, rights and privileges of disabled persons and also the equal opportunity for um, employment. And the last, we have also the legal basis. Again, um, the third one, the Batas Pambansa, Bilang 344, the act to enhance the mobility of disabled persons by requiring building institutions, establishment, and public utilities to install facilities and other devices. Okay, so, so sorry for the um, PowerPoint. And then and after that, we also have um, other um, legal basis that also that um, let the persons or our children with disability included in the classroom, a regular classroom. Okay, we have the 1987 Philippine Inst um, Constitution, uh, the uh, Republic Act number 10533, the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2012. We have the Public Act number 9155, uh, it's on the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001. Also, we have the Republic Act number um, 10157, this also for the Kindergarten Education Act. The Republic Act number 8371 for the Indigenous People Rights of 1997 and the PD of Presidential Degree 603 for the Child and Youth Welfare Code. And lastly, the, Rep the Republic Act number 7610, especially for the special protection of children against child abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation, and discrimination. And of course, the Republic Act number 9344 the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006, Republic Act number 9442, amending RA number 7277, the Magna Carta for Disabled Person. And the last one, the Republic Act number 10665, an act establishing the, um, our high school system in the Philippines, and also, of course, the Republic Act number 10361, domestic workers um, for the Batas Kasambahay. So these are all um, um, children that what we call them. These are, they are all um, under our our law that um, should be given priority or given special um, um, needs because they all they all um, have um, their own um, problems and also disability. Okay, so for the what we saw for the philosophy of education that. Um, the every child with special needs has a right to an educational program that is suitable to his needs. Special education shares with regular um, education basic responsibilities of the educational system to fulfill the right of the child to develop her full potential. So um, with this, um, because um, we are all 
we are all here. Um, it is um, our teachers, so give them um, education or quality education, even um, they have their own disability. Okay, so we have um, the philosophy of social education that every individual is valuable in his own right, should be afforded equally for equal opportunities to develop his full potential. The right also to education cannot be denied a person if only because of his disability. Okay, so, um, but, be, but before that, um, um, in school, uh, an inclusive classroom setting allows children with special needs to learn with typical developing peers of their own age in the same classroom. So it requires many adaptations to accommodate the needs um, of our children as well as teachers with the right foundation and support techniques and strategies, children of all abilities can learn together. Um, but before that, it is our, um, as some um, educators and teachers, some um, general educators, some um, special educators or teachers that we should also come for some um, planning. And then we have the classroom management. So um, in planning, um, we, have, we, we should first um, collaborate with special education teachers then related service and providers, and also the paraprofessionals on a regular basis. Then we have also, if you are co-teaching, commit to planning at least once a week with your co-teaching partner and determine your respective teaching responsibilities and write your plans down and share the workload. So, um, for the next one, we also um, use a variety of teaching method. And of course, um, these are all the, we have also the interactive teaching, the alternative teaching, we, can, we also have parallel teaching, and also the station teaching. And then, and after that, so we still in classroom management, of course, we have to develop classroom cues for settling down toward getting out materials and fitting down. We also plan for transition times between subjects or thought um, before and after changing classes and also help students organize their materials by using checklists, um, folders, and containers to keep materials organized and best. And uh, the next in the visually monitor, educate, monitor not, um, especially we have to monitor student activity. Then after that, we have to create a structured classroom, display classroom rules, post the daily schedule incorporating color and provide opportunities for purposeful man, um, movement. And then um, it is um, very important for us to, to have this or to be um, um, knowledgeable in teaching, especially with we are also um, um, in, in our children with disabilities, some different disabilities, and especially in inclusion and inclusive um, classroom, we should be um, skilled for or um, um, have these um, techniques and strategies um, in dealing with these children, especially that we are going to address the needs, we are going to, to address the gap and the other problems of our children. Okay, for, for the classroom or for the techniques um, inside the classroom or for the inclusive classroom, um, the first thing that we're going to do is to build a um, relationship. Um, this one is very important for teachers to foster a one-on-one -on -one relationship with each of the students as much as possible. So this can be accomplished by greeting them each of, at the door, asking them about their interest and using genuine praise in the classroom. Usually, the first thing that I'm um, um, as a teacher um, concerned is to build a um, positive relationship with the, the learners, especially that um, we do not know uh, the, the problem of each um, child. Then after that, we, we, we used to provide um, safe and healthy and also um, um, structured environment for them so that learning can be, uh, can be achieved and learning is very um, um, easy for these learners to, to, to achieve and meet. 
Okay, so um, in building relationship, um, there are many there are many examples on how to deal with um, these um, children. We we try to give them um, cards. We try to tell them that um, do, do, do you did you do something good? And then we used to hug them. We used to also to listen what um, really um, their feelings, and also we used to um, be to to understand what what did they feel and 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 make sure that we that 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 our learners are um prepared for that lesson um for the learning that our learner also or each of them um is um ready to listen to to attend the class depends on their mood um, we try to inspire them and also give them um motivational activities so that they can be they can um enjoy they can join they can enjoy and make fun um during learning okay so then the second one techniques that we um that i have here is um, think uh, um, we have to think the universal design for learning so when planning um when planning instruction um this is included also in plan instruction that um the the udl is the best for for um and for using this um, technique, especially when um, we are going to to identify and identifying the needs, the, the ability of a child, um, the UDL is very um, helpful for us, um, especially in inclusive classroom. This uh, curriculum should include alternatives to make accessible and appropriate for individuals with different backgrounds. We have the learning styles, the abilities, um, their disabilities and also the widely varied um, learning context. Okay, so this is um, the the UDL or the Universal um, um, Design for Learning. We have the the, the principal. They have multiple means of representing context. And also, um, we have the um, multiple means of students' expression of context, and also the flexible means of in changing a student's learning. So the multiple means of presenting context um, involves the visual and oral strategies that I'm going to um, present after this. And we have the we have the students' expression for writing, illustrating, speaking. The flexible means of the, um, this one is um, for means of engagement as students learning through um, video software and role playing. This is very applicable, especially nowadays that our children are more on, more on um, focus, um, more on um, inspired and motivated by using um, our, the technology or different gadgets. So we can, we can make a um, different um, activity for them. So, because of um, um, each of them has the uh, the the needs, so um, this is an I, I would like to show um, a picture here of um, example of our education system um, by Albert Einstein. Um, he said that everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its um, by its um, ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. So in this um, um, UDL, um, we have here the engagement. Um, how do we know, how do we, how, what, what are we going to do um, um, with this principle? So in engagement, in engagement that is the flexible options for um, a student. As a teacher, um, we have to know the strength and weakness of a student then we have to give a specific as them and specific learning goals we have to create and follow classroom routines um, provide prompts that let students know it's time uh, to ask for help and then we have to group learners with common interests or strength and um, weaknesses though to, we have also to have to provide a flexible classroom and um, the next um, exam um, the next um, um, provide um, learning choices that we're going to do for them is to is um, audio visual or hands-on we have to also the the multiple projects 
the webcast, the project-based inquiry, uh, email projects, and also, of course, the cooperative learning project. Okay, for the next um, representation, um, in representation, and representation for teachers, um, we have to be flexible ways of presenting lesson with the content. Okay, so um, the students here have the options for how they receive contents. For example, we have to display information in a flexible format. We have to adapt information for multi-language um, students. Um, prompt students to identify key ideas and relationship. So in this um, um, representation, we have here, we have to use a visual presentation, um, enlarged print, the audio tech support, and then the multimedia presentation, and the internet links to background information, and also to the access to definition, illustration, and sound files of pictures. Okay, for the third principle of um, UDL, we have here the expression. So the expression um, used um, um, as teachers, we have to provide flexible methods of expression and assessment. And then for the student, they have to choose for how they demonstrate their learning. Okay, so for the, for the expression on how the, the, the use or the um, express the, the um, outcome or the, the content and then also the output of this um, um, skill. We have now to make the graphic outlining tools as teachers. We have to provide them um, keyboarding with special supports. We have the podcast. We have the multimedia tools. For example, the PowerPoint, the Windows, the Movie Maker, and the product models. We have also the drawings, the video or digital photo reports, the collage, and of course, the graph. So then they, we can create multiple options for expression and assignment completion. We can give access to learning software because of this um, example and, and tools. We have to provide multiple means for navigation and control. We have also to give regular feedback that helps students develop goals and strategies to reach them. To reach them. Okay, so for the next um, technique and strategy, of course, um, this is um, very useful for every, every one of us, especially in, um, in regular and also in um, inclusive classroom, the differentiated instruction. So differentiated instruction is um, the way how do we use some flexible grouping. We have to provide activities that appeal to various learning, um, learning strategic preferences. And also we have to, we have to give, we have to give alternative students, um, um, activities for students and assessment. So what, what are the example of this um, flexible grouping? Of course, um, we, we have to use the whole group and also the reciprocal teaching, then the cooperative learning, and this is um, also very useful, especially in uh, maybe in all areas with um, different um, abilities um, with the children with different needs. We can also use an independent small group and then the teacher guided groups. And then we can have some learning centers for flexible grouping, the peer tutoring, the mixed readiness group, and then the, the, the most um, important and also um, how do we know the, the, the intelligence or all the ability of a child through the individualized instruction by giving him um, explicit um, instruction also, and then, then the class-wide uh, peer tutoring. So in this case, um, for example, in our inclusion or here in our school, we have the for for whole group. Um, we used to we used to um, we have this some um, application or interactive um, games for the for the learners. We have this some um, quizzes, 
and also the near fad for the whole group and also for the cooperative um, um, group or discussion and also activity. Then for the for the individual, we have individualized or um, each of our learner also can use the charm board ideas on our charm board through um, Google um, Google Google Classroom, and then we have the Kahoot for them to to be more active and participate in the discussion. Then for why why do we have differentiated instruction? Maybe um, because um, and of course because some um, classrooms are filled with the students who because an inclusive um, we have um, learners have different needs. We have learners come from different educational backgrounds. Um, they have also different attention spans and interests. Um, they have also different language abilities. And of course, um, they have different cultural backgrounds. So um, um, different instruction and differentiated instruction is very useful and very um, um, easy for, for them especially that we, if we are using it, we are in the classroom, um, um, asking them and also um, sharing them their knowledge. Um, their, our knowledge and also we are also um, used to um, share different um, skill. Now, but before, but it is important also in different instruction that we have first to pre-assess um, a child before teaching. Of course, we should um, always give them style survey form. Then we have to give interest survey, um, incorporate students' interest, and then give choice in how they learn. Then they, um, we have to give choice and where they can learn, especially for um, if we're going to have some accommodation um, in order for them to, to be more... Um, um, to, be, to, to relax and to, to not, 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 not for them to, to be more um, difficult, them encounter difficulties in learning. Okay, so we have them also, these are all very important. So we should give them um, breaks when needed. Um, we have to split small groups based on their level also, and then continuously um, assess formative and summative. Um, and the last one, the research switch groups often based on assessment. So these are all very um, um, important, especially that, that learners ha uh, are, have their unique needs. Learners are all more, um, they have um, more um, different um, ability. So the next, for the, for the next um, techniques, we should also have Okay, for the example of differentiated example, um, um, differentiated instruction, we have our example. I have only three here. We have to create learning stations. So learning stations is very important. We should provide them um, because um, this one is very, um, um, this one is um, very important um, for the learners to, to, to achieve the goal, to achieve, um, to have this um, skill um, given to them, we should um, this the, the create uh, the cre to create learning station. We have to divide sections of your classroom through which groups of students rotate. So you can facilitate this with flexible setting plan. Of course, this one is very important that um, we should also have that each station should use a unique method for teaching a skill or concept related to your lesson. Okay. For example, this one, if um, the, the, the child is interested um, that a child learns more, um, more on um, watching video, we can also have the station for um, creating artwork. Okay, so with the reading, um, if a child uh, loves reading or um, have um, uh, motivated to read, um, this one, um, we have the center or the, we have the station for him to read an article. Um, we have this um, completing puzzle. Uh, I'm listening also you to teach. Okay, so these are all examples. Um, students can rotate between stations at and bomb. So we can help students process the content 
after they've been through the station, then you can hold a class discussion or a sent question for them to answer. Then the next sample for the differentiated exam instruction, we usually we use task card. Um, like learning station, task cards allow you to give students a range of content. So answering task card can also be a small um, group activity. For this uh, small group activity, we can add variety um, to classes that normally focus on solo or can be also large group learning. Um, first, we have to make identify tasks and questions that you typically find on worksheets in a textbook. Then um, we can now print or laminate cards that each contain a single task or questions. And then finally, we can set up stations around your classroom and pair students together to rotate them. So you can individualize transfer instruction here. We can have here by monitoring the pairs. We can have them to address the knowledge gap when, when needed. Okay, for and the third example, for the differentiated instruction, we have the target difference tenses with lessons. Of course, this um, lesson should um, resonate with more students if targets, if these, um, they have the different learning um, style, like visual, the tactile, the auditory, and kinesthetic, um, instead of only one. So this one is applicable, appeal to a range of learning style by, they can also make a video, a playing video. Um, we can also use some um, infographs, then providing audio books, getting students to act out a scene, then incorporating charts and classroom within text. We have also to give what's spoken and written um, direction to task and using relevant physical objects such as money when teaching math skill. Um, a lot in time for students to create artistic reflection and interpretation of lesson. So not only with these tactics, some um, help my students grasp the core concept of learning of lessons, but makes uh, make less more engaging. Okay, so, okay, for the next one, after the differentiated instruction, we have here again, the, 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 the most, um, the one um, important here again is the cooperative learning. So why cooperative learning? Um, this is um, very uh, helpful for, um, in different subjects, especially in, in science, in English, English or, um, any any activity that um, also can be can can form in a small group or in pair. If the strategy um, we use the five condition, um, this is um, we should um, the task must be authentic, um, worthwhile, and appropriate for students working in groups. Um, we have the small group learning must be the goal. Um, the cooperative behavior should be thought to and used by students. And then the group work should be structured so that students depend on another to complete a task successfully. Then we have the students should be held individually accountable. So because of this um, cooperative learning, um, um, in, if this one is also introduced or by the education, the farmers like Chan Dewey, um, began to analyze the benefits of students working together in the classroom. So we have the pair share. Um, we can also have small groups or quads and then and the mixed skill groupings. Um, not only because of we are doing the collaborative um, um, activity, but we can also develop here the value, the value of being um, to cooperate or the co cooperation we have also the teamwork and we also are each of them um, we, we develop the the how do do they um, treat each other we have also here the the trust and also the and most especially the collaboration okay for the next some um, techniques and strategies we have the graphic organizer 
So graphic organizer is also, especially in reading on English on, or in presenting our lesson, um, some of um, educators and in inclusive um, classroom use them this to, to assist students with organizing information in meaningful ways. Um, this can also help children classify ideas and communicate more effectively. Um, so all graphic organizers are designed to facilitate the understanding of key concepts by allowing students to visually identify key points and ideas. Okay, then the next um okay, so we have here the different examples. Um we have the Venn diagram, we have the math um, chart, the T chart, KWL chart, we have the concept map, the main idea web, and also um, we have the outlining on um, different um, graphic of MISER to be to be presented during discussion for our learners to easily um, understand the lesson, especially in, in English and reading if um, they, they, are, they are reading a story for a small group, for, for struggling learners, for um, learners um, in, the, in primary and also in, in intermediate. Okay, so the next um, techniques um, strategies is how um, the, the instructional sequence. So um, in, in English, we use this um, explicit teaching and modeling. So we have this um, um, model, this. we have the I do, this one is for the teacher who will make the, the presentation um, as serves as a model. We have the we do or the group practice and then the you do for the individual practice. Um, this um, explicit teaching and modeling, um, we have to provide supports or scaffolds to students as they are learning new material and withdraw them when they are able to perform the task on their, on their own. Okay, so for example, in here, the I do, so the, the, the learners here will watch or listen or will learn uh, from the teacher who is also a source as a model. Then with the guidance of the teacher and, and, and the student, they can do or perform together. And then the next one for you do, the child now can do independently or with practice or with also his own um, ability. He can now um, um, really answer the, the question or the, the activity through the use of this explicit teaching and modeling. Okay, so as um, I've said that number one, we have the modeled instruction. This is for teacher demonstration that I have to do this. Um, I am the model. And then for number two, we have the co-construction. Co we have the group work and teacher direction. Both of them, a learner and a children can do together the, the activity. And then for the you do facilitation, this one. So we can have here the individual work with teacher as guide. And then for the independent practice, you do. You know, the student now completes task unaided, can do this independently. Uh, or with his own. Okay, the next acti uh, the next technique that I have here is the think, pair, share. So this uh, strategy also promote, recall, and understanding of new learning and allow students to reflect individually on a question. We had a pair up with a partner to share and compare answer and finally give the best answer. So we have here the more, more active learning strategies. We can download here the packet and techniques for active learning. Okay, so in here we can think, um, quietly think to yourself how to respond to hard question. Then we have to pair, find your partner and pair with them to discuss your thinker. This one we can have this, the, the one who is also with, um, um, the one who it has a high skill and also the slow or the struggling learner. And then we can make this and share. We can down, now they share their own collaborative thoughts with the whole group. And um, this is best for the group activity and reporting. Okay, so for the thing pair share, um, this is very um, 
um, useful and especially if we have our um, inclusion or inclusive classroom. Then the next strategy is the informal and formal assessment. We have the, the informal for the pre-assessment, checking for understanding, question, okay, we can assess students individually, but um, the KWL chart is not needed here in informal. But in formal assessment, we have the test pieces, the authentic assessment, and like, for example, the performance assessment, the portfolio, the project, the lab report, the word problem, and the essay. essay. Okay, next. For the next strategy, we have the, this one, to giving each child a chance to shine. So we have here to involve letting students share an island of competency. Okay, we should give them the, 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 the chance to excel. Okay, encourage them to, um, to complement each other on their skill and talents. And in an inclusive classroom, all students should know that they can learn from each other. Okay, so that's why we have to, to know their different abilities. We, we can use the um, 12 multiple, um, the multiple intelligence by, Ho by Howard Gardner um, to, to know if these are inclined or the, the child is also excel in musical, in logical, mathematical, interpersonal, bodily kinesthetic, special, special, interpersonal, or linguistic. Okay, I have your example or citation um, in an inclusive classroom. Um, teacher Arlene wants a student who were identified as special, special needs. For weeks, she couldn't get him to do anything in the classroom. He had major anger issues and would not complete assignment. When she prodded and encouraged, he merely responded that he was dumb and couldn't do the work. After talking with his mom and the special education teacher, she learned that math was one of his favorite subjects, although he was performing poorly in that class as well. It was a thought he had given, uh, given up. Then she assigned a math problem activity all that also utilized drawing and coloring. The young man jumped at the opportunity to play and created a beautiful and mathematical correct paper. Instead of just saying good job and moving on, she gushed over his paper. She enthusiastically said over and over what a great job he had done and kept telling him how smart he was. That continued with every assignment over a period of several weeks until she finally noticed that all his papers showed a vast improvement. She was, he was now participating in class. He had fewer fits of anger. He was making a passing grade or higher on all assignments. Between class lesson modification and shock encouragement, that child went from being a fitter to being an achiever. Okay, so for the next um, strategy, we have also here the teaching with big questions. This is very important. If we are um, um, trying to help a student um, for the struggling learner to read, um, the students who understand the material on more basic level can give a simpler answer to the big question. Whereas students who understand the material on a deeper level can give a more complex answer. Okay, so this is why um, teaching with big questions is very important if we are um, using um, um, reading story to, um, to a child, especially for a child with special needs. The next one is um, how to make, do we make objectives clear? So we have here opposing and reviewing objectives in age appropriate language so all students achieve the desired objective of each lesson. It is especially helpful for kids with special needs. Um, the next one is how, how do we um, make a learning center? Um, learning center is also very important for them, for students to work on different tasks at the same time. I'm leaving teachers to work with individual smaller groups of students as needed. So at times when no students need additional instruction, the teacher, the general teacher and special educator can now circulate the classroom, helping out the students at various centers 
and offering enrichments as necessary. Okay, so it is also um, important to have this on incorporating goals into the lesson. And this is um, and the one that um, the, the SPED or the special education teacher um, does in, in every time that um, the, the start of the, the, the school year, um, it is very important to know the, the weakness or the, uh, the ability or the needs of students who enter an inclusion classroom. Um, with this IEP require. So IEP is um, for individualized education plan. We have to require this close attention, attention in an inclusion setting. So this is why teachers must be sure to meet the goals on the IEP and to help the student achieve more, much more than what the other student require in the classroom. So because I'm rather than pulling a child out of the classroom to work on IEP goals, try to um, incorporating those goals into the lesson. Um, for um, especially with um, children with special needs, IEP is a plan for them to know their, their weakness, their strength, and how do we address the gaps and the problems of them in each child in a regular setting. And for the regular class or student, we also have this um, um, daily lesson, um, lesson plan. But for the special children, we have this individualized education program or plan, IEP. Okay, so this one is also, um, if the lesson plan or daily plan is also uh, made by, by teachers, some advisors or, or the, the, the concerned teacher new subject with the, the principal, the IEP is also made or, um, by the teamwork of the different um, um, professionals. So we have here the parents, the, the students, the school representative, the transition agency, the child expert, the evaluation expert. They, the, these um, are in charge for the for the making of or the um, the making of IEP of each special child. Okay, so for example, this is an example of individual learning plan for each child. Okay, so for for the um, again the the case or another situation, um, we have the special needs students need a great um, deal to encourage an encouragement. What often happens is that this student wants to achieve, but feels separated from other students. Um, we always encounter this in our um, inclusion inclusive classroom. So other students, um, but feel separated from other students when he or she is unable to complete certain tasks. That causes intense frustration. Without proper encouragement and reassurance, special needs students often come to themselves as dumb, which can le lead to um, apathy towards school. Um, why, should, why should I try when I just fail? I'm stupid anyway, so I don't need to do this activity. So one, one way you can move a student from such a negative attitude is um, to more um, focus on his or her strength. Mm, these teaching strategies in inclusive classroom settings um, can be helpful for general educators and special educators alike if all members of the classroom work to include all students in the classroom activities. The inclusive classroom can be a safe haven for anyone involved. So, and then to ensure success for students with disabilities in general education classroom, teacher must plan collaboratively, create structured classrooms with clear rules and expectations and teach content in meaningful and memorable ways. And then, and this is now the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for um, watching my my, my pres um, as I presented the teaching um, for children with special needs and inclusive classroom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rosa. Now we will proceed to our question and answer portion. If our teachers in the Zoom meeting have any question for our speaker today, you may unmute your microphones or you may chat in our chat box so that our speaker can address them. 
Also, for our YouTube viewers, if you have questions for our speaker po, you may type it in our chat box. Okay, so we have a question po from our YouTube viewer from Jonna Alim. Is the printed modular approach effective for learners with special needs? What could be the best strategy for learners who are verbally mute or hearing impaired? Okay, so for the printed materials for the deaf and mute, we can provide more auditory and devices for them, and we can may, um, make sure that um, different techniques can be given to them. Um, we have now our devices, um, especially this one that we are in this um, native, um, and they are native um, digital. We, we, we can now provide more um, devices uh, that, that um, used to address the needs. So, so with um, the different apps, now we can, we can, we can download the different um, interactive games. We can have now this um, through um, um, presentation and screen. Um, we, can, we can help them. Thank you very much, ma'am. Our next question is from Christine Mi. What are some ways regular educators and special educators can work together effectively? Okay, so so as I've mentioned, um, as I've mentioned that um, collaboration and also um, the 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 we can make have this um discussion of focus discussion with educate with the general and special educators. We can they they can also um talk on how to address the gap they can have this um um during 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 the the to solve the problems we they can talk and they can they can have this um open communication um both um to discuss some matters um, um about how to how to address or how to identify the needs of the student Thank you very much, ma'am. Our next question is from Heril Haranilla. Can you give more specific or uh, give examples about class station part? Okay, for the class station part, um, in in regular, especially in in our school, we have here the um, class station that we we put um for for reading. Um, we have this um um books and provided with the materials so reading materials um, for for the the math or the for the math um subject we can also have the station for the um materials um especially in or the the, the tools that can be used in in is for for the numbers or for counting and numbers and for the numeracy we can have this um station um in in different um need by the student so it's all our teachers who can also make this um the strategies how to to provide them we with the help of our head we can make uh, some um, provide material um, station especially for what what does the child need or what does the small group need needs or what what um the other struggling learners um, need Thank you very much, ma'am. We have a question here in our Zoom po from Marielle Aubrey. Good afternoon, ma'am. You said that in planning, we have to collaborate with special education teachers, related service providers, and paraprofessionals. Who are these paraprofessionals that we have to collaborate with? Okay, so the paraprofessionals are those that um, um, who, who used to, the professionals that who will also um, help um, identify the depends on the need, the need, uh, the the uh, what is this disability of a child. So this one um, um, is um, we used to ask them um, the, their help to identify the 
um, what 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 are activities should be done or what um diagnosis or what should be done to this um child um it depends on the disability of a child so they are all more um um needed in especially in in making an iep or a plan for each child Thank you very much, ma'am. Our last question is from Arlene Salcedo. How can we handle children with special needs now that we are using online classes? I think it's a bit related po with the question of Ms. Jonna Alim. Are these, um, are these ways still applicable in the online class? Yes, ma'am. This um, this one is applicable, especially that um, with the guidance of parents, we can provide more materials. Uh, um, it depends on the communication. We can communicate um, parents here to to help us also um, um, teach the child at home. We can also um, collaborate with them and um, with their um, their involvement in here. We can easily now. Um, address the need, especially that um, if the child um, really um, motivated well in in using um, the the different apps that we have in our in our gadgets, we can we can send more um, um, activity through this. Um, we have this activity, those um, interactive games. So. Um, through this um, technology, um, it is very important for them to 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 learn we can find we can we can find deep um, um, ways on how to address the need so the the collaboration the help of the parents and the teachers special ed and the um, regular we can now um, we can achieve the the quality education that they all need Thank you very much, ma'am. That's all the questions we have for now. Any last reminders to our viewers for today, po? Thank you very much, ma'am Rosa. That's all the questions we have for now. Any last reminders to our viewers for today, po? Okay, so for for our viewers, um, also our um, my colleagues and my educate my um, educators, um, um, we still have this um, stay um, positive. Um, we are all in this profession and be patient and always um, remember that that um, we can do this um, together. There we have it. In behalf of Pibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this very informative learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, ma'am. And to all our Kavibal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. We also encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Bival Facebook and YouTube channel. We would like to thank those teachers who participated with us this afternoon. Let me mention our teachers, Ma'am Adeline Tavera, Ma'am Bianca Joy Solis, Ma'am Cecil, Ma'am Corazon Santos, Ma'am L.V. Ross Cabebe, Ma'am Irma Loxin, Ma'am Jen Benitez, Ma'am Gertrude Kilo Prevera, Ma'am Gina Granada, Sir Jose Francis Romanillos, Sir Lloyd Jester Dometita, Ma'am Marielle Aubrey Palmenco, Ma'am Marilu Tawatao, Ma'am Remedios Duques, Ma'am Sherna Colanzo, Tamer Groyon, and Ma'am Maricon Tumulto. Thank you very much teachers for being here with us. Muli, maraming